All right. Uh, thank you all so much for uh, uh, tuning in tonight. Um, welcome to the uh, Stathead Baseball Reference postseason webinar. Uh, I was looking at the chat, and it seems like we've got people from all over the country. We've got people from all over the world tuning in tonight, um, which is very exciting. Um, I didn't do uh, a statistical calculation. Um, it seemed like it was about 50-50, whether people think Judge is going to hit a home run tonight or not. Um, but uh, we'll uh, keep an eye out for that uh, and uh, see what happens. But in the meantime, we're going to get this webinar started. So uh, I'll start by introducing myself, and then I'll introduce our uh, esteemed panelists who are joining us tonight. Uh, so my name is Jonah, um, and I do uh, product marketing here at uh, Sports Reference. Um, mainly for Stathead, which is a, a subscription product that lets you go inside the baseball reference database and do an answer more difficult questions than what you can get on, on baseball reference, the, the normal site. You can answer, you can find a lot of stuff on there. You can answer a lot of your questions on there, but those questions always seem to generate more for me. And uh, uh, Stathead is a way to, to kind of dig deeper. So we'll, we'll get more into what Stathead is and how it works. But I want to introduce the other people on the uh, call tonight. So first, we have uh, Adam Dorowski. Um, Adam is the product director here at Sports Reference. Um, and uh, yeah, Adam, say hello. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks, Jonah, for, for asking me to do this. Uh, I'm, uh, like, like Jonah said, I'm director of product here at Sports Reference. So I just love to hear from users what, what their expectations are for, for what we should build and, and how uh, our products are, are serving them with their, their needs. So I'm really excited to hear uh, from people uh, tonight. And Adam, what's your Twitter handle? I am Baseball Twit. Yeah, uh, so you may be familiar with Adam's work on Twitter or uh, you know he's, he's probably interviewed some of you at some point <laughs> for, uh, uh, doing UX work for for the comp for the stat head or for the reference sites, so uh, he knows uh, everything there is to know about these um, websites. So going to be good to get some insights from him. And then also joining us tonight is Jeremy Frank. Uh, Jeremy is the creator of MLB Random Stats on Twitter. He's the creator of Wordle, the addictive game, uh, and he is a former sports reference intern. Uh, Jeremy, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, so as Jonah mentioned, I created the game Wordle, now known as uh, MLB Pickle. So basically a knockoff of the famous word game Wordle that is now playable on the MLB Play app, which is always a good time if you're looking to test your knowledge about baseball players, but also more well known for creating the Twitter account MLB Random Stats, where I use StatHead mostly to find really quirky, interesting baseball stats, which I'm sure everyone in, in attendance is interested in. So if you don't follow me already, uh, go check it out there. Um, I also, this summer, I worked as an intern in the Astros front office. So I got to see what working for a baseball team was like, um, kind of on the, in like the decision-making side, which was really cool, but previously also worked as a data intern and as a marketing intern for Sports Reference, which is how I know uh, Jonah, Adam, and Katie. So uh, Jonah, I appreciate you inviting me on here. I'm really excited to, to talk baseball. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, it's a really exciting panel, and uh, we're gonna get started. We have one other person here tonight. Uh, her name is Katie Sharp, and she is the uh, uh, she does customer success for Stathead. Um, so she will be monitoring the chat um, and uh, helping out um, if people post questions in there. We we'll try to get to some questions here on the panel, but she may beat us to them and answer them in the chat. Uh, she's also just going to be be hanging around. She's a big Yankees fan, so she's probably going to let us know uh, <laughs> what happens with Aaron Judge um, uh, as as that progresses. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, get started. So first, we're just going to uh, I don't know, just chat a little bit about the upcoming postseason, um, what we have to look forward to. You know, kind of what we're keeping an eye out. So I guess just uh, a big question. Uh, just to start with, do do you guys think anyone has a chance to beat the Dodgers this year? Uh, yeah, I think that I think obviously going into it, the Dodgers are, are clearly the the favorites. But you know, anything anything can happen. I think that there are some concerns about like I don't know if the the front end of their rotation is is as elite as a lot of historic World Series teams have had. I think pitching obviously went to the postseason. And they they obviously have a good rotation, Urias and and Gonsolin. Um, obviously have great numbers this year, but it's not the one-two punch that the Mets have with, with DeGrom 
and Scherzer, obviously. And I think that um, we saw it with the Nationals a few years ago that that good of a pitching staff can kind of overcome. Obviously, the Dodgers have a great lineup, but you could see other teams like, for example, the Mets this year um, who have a really good pitching staff and kind of just lead their have their horses carry them into to the World Series. Yeah, I think uh, looking at the Astros this year, too, I think there's a lot of people who believe that they will be the ones that go all the way to. But just this morning, and this is the type of perspective I'll bring is just this morning, I was listening to a, a podcast about about the 1987 Minnesota Twins, which just proves that literally anything is possible when you get into the postseason, especially with the new format this year. I'm looking forward to seeing how the new format just completely shakes things up and uh, causes havoc in the in the postseason, because I guess that's when it's the most fun. Yeah, I was curious uh, what you all think about the new format, if there are any, um, I don't know, how do you think it will play out? Uh, as As a fan of a team that's been in the sort of division wild card race all year it seemed to me that like the barrier for for advancing out of the wild card is so much higher now because you're going to pitch your two or three best starters in the in the opening series and then immediately have to turn around and go on the road to play one of the one of the four best teams in the league regardless of who it is starting with the back of your rotation does it I mean obviously anything can happen in the postseason but that seems like a, a, it's going to be a tall task. How, how do you think about it? And also, Adam, I'm kind of curious from the the maybe the it, the design programming side, like are there any challenges when the, the playoff format changes as far as having to uh, uh, fix the site or fix stat ed, um, any, any, anything like that? Uh, I mean, just to pull back on that curtain a little bit, you know, uh, Kenny Jacklin, our, our baseball developer, he's always on his toes with, you know, just over the last few years, the things, the amount of code that has had to be written because of Shohei Otani, like we're just, you know, changing the playoff format is nothing compared to the way he's changed the game. So I'm sure that uh, Kenny will have everything handled just fine and we'll get all of the new playoff series and, and you know, whatever names that they are, they'll they'll find their way onto reference and stat head. Now, in terms of, you know, what, what I think of the, the new format, I mean, people have been complaining since all the new wildcard uh, series were added that it cheapens the uh, division win. And I guess one division winner is not going to make out as well here, but, you know, those top couple, you know, they really get a big benefit here. And there is a reason to try to win that division. I remember, you know, those old Red Sox Yankees battles. It was like, why bother? You're both going to get into the postseason anyway. And it's the exact same thing, but now it's different. Yeah, definitely agree with that there. I think one thing that people I think might have overlooked when they were actually coming up with the, the format is a team like the Dodgers this year getting the one seed. but if the Mets win, I'm assuming the Mets still win the division because the Braves are up two games. I think it's pretty unlikely. I think the Mets probably need to win out and the Braves lose out or something like that, or something very improbable needs to happen for the Mets to win the division. That if the Mets don't win the division, they get the top wild card spot, which is the four seed. If they beat the five seed, then they play the Dodgers in the Dodgers' first game. And I I have to imagine that just if I'm a Dodgers fan or if I'm a Dodgers front office member, I think the team I'd want to play least, even though the Mets have already burned their starting pitchers, is probably the Mets. I think, in my opinion, I think the Mets are a little bit stronger in the playoffs than the Braves in terms of their roster. I know the Braves have won a couple more games, but I think it's kind of the Dodgers getting a little bit of a short. And I, I think I would have preferred with this format that um, the team who, who gets the ones he gets to pick who they play. I know that might not be the most feasible with, with travel and everything, but it's kind of unlucky for them to win 110, 113 games in the regular season and get shafted and have to play a 100 win team with two of the best pitchers of our generation in the first round of the playoffs. It's crazy to think that that would be the second year in a row that the Dodgers had to play a 100 win team in the, in the LDS. Cause they had to go to San Francisco and play the giants last year. That's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, that is, uh, that is interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I think, Adam, I think Adam, your, your point about kind of making the regular season almost a little higher stakes was kind of bore out for me. Obviously I'm a Braves fan and watching the games this weekend, they felt like playoff games. Uh, it was, it was a really lit atmosphere in Atlanta. Um, the, there was real intensity between the teams. Um, and it, you could tell that they understood what they had to play for. Um, and uh, certainly uh, it was, it was a very exciting, it was a very exciting game, but yeah, I think that the, the other thing too is the the bullpens are just so important, and I wonder if the Mets like kind of kind of missed out in July on on the 
possibility of, of adding maybe one more arm to that bullpen uh, that really could have helped them. Uh, uh, as great as their starting pitchers are in the postseason, it's still going to come down to. It feels like every year it just comes down to who has who has the the three relievers or four relievers that they can trust. Um, so, yeah, that should be interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll do I'll do one more kind of like current events type question, and then we'll segue into stat head. Uh, who's your uh, MVP pick, Otani or Judge? Um, my I'm I personally lean Judge a little bit. I'm not one of those people that is a diehard either way that is gonna argue or yell or like make you feel bad for for choosing Otani if you're the other way or um, if I was an Otani fan picking Judge. I think that both of them are very good. Um, good choice and I think both of them are clear-cut MVPs in pretty much every other year since the end of the steroid era so I don't think it's I think it's more more arguing who you think is the winner rather than who you think shouldn't win I think it's more I, I feel bad for whoever gets all the negative arguments because both of them are having seasons that we haven't seen either before or in a long time so I personally lean judge a little bit I think his his offensive season um, is one of the best we've seen ever from any player especially if you if you take the steroids out of it um, I'm sure you could find that kind of stat using stat head, but um, so I think that offensive value um, put to him a little bit ahead for Shohei, but I do think I would say that Shohei's season is probably the most impressive I've ever seen as, as a fan. I know I'm, I'm pretty young, but um, I think in terms of just the sheer impressiveness or the, I don't think that will, this will ever happen again, whereas maybe someone down the road hit 60 homers, but I think in terms of value, I, I lean towards judge. It, yeah, it, it's a toss up. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not saying anything too, <laughs> too big here, but uh, you know, I, I lean towards judge literally just because Otani got to do it last year. Last year was the year of Otani. This year can be the year of judge. I mean, the story I think just carries it That's a little bit more weight this year too. And, but you know, back to backs for Otani would be so well-deserved too. Yeah, I, I agree. It's been a, I, it's just been two awesome seasons. I, yeah. I, <laughs> really enjoyed watching them both uh so let's start let's let's dig into stat head a little bit let's start talking about you know uh now that we're all primed and excited for what's going to be uh, a really awesome postseason uh one of the ways that the best ways i think that you can kind of follow along with the action is with stat head um so there's uh so i guess just to start with um uh, I'm not sure how basic we want to get here, but um, I, I guess we'll just start with kind of kind of the basics. Like, where do you find uh, postseason stats in Stathead? I could take that one. Yeah. Um, so where, where you find postseason stats is uh, really exactly where you find regular season stats. And many of our finders, we have a uh, game type filter that allows you to choose between regular season, postseason, and uh, oftentimes we have all-star game too, like for the uh, game finder and event finder. Uh, all, not in the season finder, because all-stars don't really have seasons. But uh, yeah, that, that's where you can go. And and when you turn on those postseason filters, if you're on a, in like the game finder, you can then pick and choose like what series or what game, and you can really get as deep as you want and find uh, individual things that happened. Or uh, now in the season finder, you can roll up entire postseasons, which is something that's brand new to the season finder uh, just a couple months ago that I'm very excited about. Yeah, um, there's. Uh, I want to get into that the new season finder thing because I think that's a big change that we dropped uh, a couple months ago. So this is the first postseason that that's going to apply to you. Um, but you said something else that we actually got a question about uh, from from someone before the webinar. Uh, thank you to everyone who submitted questions when you RSVP'd. Uh, one of them was: Is it possible to split postseason search results? by series. So can I look for just uh, LCS or World Series uh, stats? And the answer to that is yes. So I'm gonna share my screen now and show you very quickly how, how you do that um, in Stathead. So uh, this is the Stathead baseball homepage. Uh, uh, some of you are, are probably very familiar with this. Some of you may have never ventured to this part of uh, the sports reference sites before. Um, but you can see there are all of these different sort of uh, sort of finders uh, that let you search stats by by a different sort of levels. So uh, for this, since we're looking for stats from a single series, where we're going to go is the game finder. And uh, once we're in the game finder, as Adam mentioned, 
if you scroll down to this game type uh, option, you'll see that you can switch to postseason. And when you do that, you'll see that this new option box appears uh, that lets you filter by series and game. So you can see here there's drop downs for the World Series or the LCS or the LDS. And then you can even get into the AL and NL uh, uh, versions of those series at the wild card. Um, in addition to that, you can actually search by game number. So you could look up every game one. You could look up game sevens. But of course, not every series goes is a best of seven. So you could do uh, sudden death, which would be like game seven, but also game five of the LDS. Uh, and also the one, winner takes all one game wild card game stuff like that, even potential clinch and elimination games. Um, so that's how you do that. But in addition to kind of just these basic results, which show you just the, the, the basic numbers, if you go up to these search types, you can change from the single game, which is what it's showing you right now, just a list of individual performances in one game. And you can change it to this find totals uh, from all games in a season by a player matching criteria. And now remember, I've already selected uh, I'll do the World Series. Uh, why not? That's the most important. So I've selected World Series, and I'm searching for this. And when I run this search, what it's going to do is give me that player's combined stat line for that year's World Series. So I'm about to see who hit the most home runs in a, in a single World Series with this search. So you could use it to, to search things that way. There's also an option for multiple seasons that does the same thing. So if you want to look up career stats in the World Series uh, and stuff like that. So um that was a really good question uh, that I just wanted to, I wanted to make sure that we uh, tackled and showed off how, how to do that. Um, so uh, that was really uh, interesting. Thanks for the, thanks to whoever submitted that. Um, Jeremy, I, I was wondering, um, how do you use StatHead during the uh, postseason? Are there, are there particular tools or searches you, you like to run or, or interesting stuff you like to look up or is it more kind of in the moment, just seeing what, what's happening? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I think the the new season finder is awesome. Um, I think there aren't too many websites out there that have um, condensed postseason sets either for a year or for a career, which is really nice to have um, at my convenience. I'm also a big fan of like the um, the event finders um, when you're looking at, um, let's say, a big home run happens. It's very easy since obviously like when I'm when I'm talking about tweeting a stat, trying to find something the the last time something happened. Um, there are just so many fewer postseason games than in the regular season. So odds are if something happens, you could find um, it may not have happened in, in a very, very long time. So, for example, finding the last time a team hit a walk-off home run in a postseason game, come from behind or something like that. That's something you could very easily do using the, the batting event finder. And you could find all of the occurrences. I believe it's complete the entire postseason history, right, Adam? Is that correct? Yeah, so yeah, that's going all the way back to that. 1903. 1903, the first World Series. So. You could find every single home run over 120 years of baseball history, which is like what you remember, what your grandparents remember, what your grandparents' grandparents might remember from if they were watching the, the early 1900s uh, playoffs. But it's really cool to be able to see um, when something crazy, whether that be a home run or a big strikeout or something like that, try and find the last time that it happened. And usually those times are moments that everyone's familiar with. So it's kind of cool seeing when something happens, like where it's placed in history might be. Um, compared to other things yeah the event finder is probably like the the tool i use the most during the postseason because it's it, the postseason is so much about like one play you know swinging things in, in in such important directions and uh it really sparks that imagination of like man when was the last time this happened in this inning with this many players on base or whatever and uh it's very very easy to pull that up in the event finder i may show I'll show, I'll probably show that off uh, a little bit later, just because I know it's one of those tools that like looks kind of complicated when you first see it, but it's actually very easy and intuitive to use. And uh, like Jeremy's saying, it's very, very powerful. Um, so Adam, we had a question in the, in the chat um, that uh, I was curious to get your thoughts on. Uh, Chris wants to know, what are the best tools to use on StatHead to evaluate pitchers? Uh, so um, uh, what, where, where are you going when you're looking up pitching stats? Oh, goodness. Uh, so that that can be a pretty complicated question, especially when there's so many different ways to evaluate pitching. And then with the postseason, you have your small samples. So, you know, a lot of times I'm looking at the actual just traditional things like earned run average, or uh, I like to look sometimes for single game WPA to look for those real dominant performances. And, you know, just 
good old fashioned strikeouts to walks is a, another good indication too. Uh, so, I mean, it's, there's, it's really just what, however you want to uh, judge your pitchers because the, the sample is so small that there's a, and you know, the good thing is you can slice and dice it all of those different ways. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, there's, there's, there's such a wealth of, uh, of, of stats on here and for for every tool there's a batting version and a pitching version so uh something like the event finder we're talking about you can flip it and look up pitchers who you know got important strikeouts or uh you know um surrendered an unfortunate walk uh in, in, in a given situation uh the split finder is is a very cool tool uh that actually like there's no postseason filter in the split finder but it's still a very useful tool when you're analyzing the postseason because uh, so much of the managerial decisions are happening situationally. And, you know, guys are getting pinch hit in these crazy high leverage situations or the levers are coming out uh, in these important times. And uh, you can look at the split finder to try and get some insight into what the manager is thinking, what the front office was thinking, kind of what, what is behind those, those tactical decisions. Um, so. Uh, Oh, or did, you, did you want to jump in there? Or? Yeah, well, where you just said the split finder doesn't technically have a, a postseason, but it does allow you to kind of use that to, you know, figure out what the outcomes of the postseason might be. The batter versus pitcher tool is another interesting one that, uh, you know, that's made of, of small samples, but we do have an option in there that you can include the postseason as well. And what that'll do is for the top players who fa are facing each other much more often in the postseason, it'll, you know, give you a bigger sample to work from there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all of those uh, all of those tools are really cool. So, um, I I uh, I guess uh, I don't know. Do either of you guys want to have like a search in mind or anything cool that you found on Stathead that you want to want to show off? Or uh, I can. Oh, you, you go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just I was poking around earlier today. Um, I was looking to see if any milestones could be reached this postseason. So I, I ran a search on Stathead to try and find the player with the the most career postseason home runs. And so Manny Ramirez is in first place by a decent amount of 29, but second place, unbeknownst to me, who had worked with the Astros, is Jose Altuve at 23. So um, I don't think six home runs in a postseason is completely unheard of. I think that um, obviously the Astros would need to need to see need to have some things go right for Altuve to get that many at bats to hit those six homers, but uh, six to tie seven to lead. But I think that would be a pretty cool accomplishment especially because i think he, he's still relatively young like his career is far from over but almost certainly break this record as long as something bad doesn't happen to, to him or that the astros in the near future but um it would it would be i guess something to watch for and then also you have guys like um who are who are a little bit further down like pujols who's one away from his 20th postseason homer george springer who, who could is known for hitting a ton of postseason bombs um, just a lot of guys with with the new postseason format all these career records are going to be blown out of the water it's only a matter of time but it would be cool to see um Altuve have a shot at it this year we we talked about earlier the new postseason stuff in the season finder since you can use that to look this up I just wanted to share my screen and and show how you would do that um so uh here I'm in the batting season finder um and you'll see here again we have this this game type filter uh, that lets you switch from regular season to postseason. Uh, you'll see it's already sorting by home runs. And then I'll switch from single season to combined seasons or careers. And by default, you can see that means any season ever, basically. I also apologize if you hear my dog getting uh, a little uh, hyper in the background. Uh, he just winds himself up sometimes. Uh, Judge must be up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so there you go. You can now see uh, the search Jeremy was talking about. Manny Ramirez, the career leader with 29, but Jose Altuve right there. Um, and uh, it'd be pretty cool if uh, Altuve broke that record. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, that's really exciting. Is there, Adam, is there other stuff that you found or that people have sent you using this new postseason filter? Well, I was going to just going to jump on what Jeremy said, and I was going to say, if only there was a way to find out how many times a player has hit six home runs in a single postseason. <laughs> uh, it turns out there is. Um, so I don't even have to do much. I can just change this from combines to single seasons right. and uh, click the get results. And we can see here that it's happened 26 times. Um, it looks like the most recent was uh, Randy Rosarena uh, and uh, Giancarlo Stanton back in 2020. Um, 
which that format was pretty similar to this year's one, right? I'm trying to, I know there were like, I remember there were like eight teams and more games. Um, so could be a sign that we're in for a couple six home runs postseasons this year. Right. Well, Altuve did it uh, right there in 2017. He hit seven of them. So it's not out of the realm of possibilities. Um, so we had another question uh, from uh, 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 a uh, person who uh, was asking about uh, championship WPA. Um, so I was wondering, um, he says, the question was simple. What is championship WPA and how do you use it? Um, how uh, th that's a, a stat that you can find on both baseball reference and stat head um, that I, I want to go into because I think it's really cool for the postseason. So I'm not sure I'm happy to explain it or if one of you wants to take it. Um, I, I feel like I've been talking too much lately. I could take it if you want. Yeah. Um, championship. The only reason I, I say so is because I think it's it's one of my personal favorite stats. I've been a fan of it since it was on Dan's uh, baseball gauge website before he started working uh, for baseball reference. But um, if you're familiar with WPA, win probability added, win probability added looks at um, every single at bat and it looks at the win probability of the team who's batting before the at bat and after the bat. So after the at bat. So if a team goes from a 60% chance of winning a game before someone bats and then a 75% chance after that at bat, um, the batter gets credited with 0.15 win probability added and the pitcher gets credited with negative 0.15. Obviously, it's pretty simple. It gives all the credit to the batter and the pitcher, which is a little simple. It doesn't include fielding or anything. Um, but championship win probability added is one of my favorite stats to evaluate a player's legacy by, because instead of looking at um, how much it increases the team's chance of winning the game, it actually looks at how much the play increases or decreases the team's chance of winning the World Series. So before and after each play, it says, okay, maybe if this is a regular season, the Braves have a 10% chance of winning the World Series after a play in yesterday's game or before a play in yesterday's game, and then after the play, they go up to 11%, which is not a huge difference, but in terms of when helping a team win a World Series in the regular season, a 1% addition is, is a huge difference just based on one play. So championship win probability added is summed across all the players at bats, both in the regular season and in the postseason. Obviously, the postseason is more important in terms of winning the World Series than a regular season game could be, um, but it's really cool to try and put into perspective a player's accomplishment. So all the big home runs that your favorite players have hit in the postseason, um, those big swings and momentum, those are all properly credited for in championship one probability added, which doesn't get accounted for in stats like war or OPS or something like that. It really, it, it almost like the big clutch stat, in my opinion, that takes into account everything in a player's career. I don't know, Adam, if you have anything to add to it, I know you're looking to, to talk as well, but I, I love championship one probability added, not as a terms of like evaluating players, but just kind of as like a legacy stat. I think all of the players, if you sort, my career championship win probability added. I think you'll find pretty much all of the known historic baseball greats, especially when it comes to stepping up in the postseason. Yeah, just to jump on that a little bit, I use it not just to look at the greats, but the great moments too, because we have the pivotal play finder, which will show you championship win probability added by event, which is absolutely awesome because you can see just the the biggest moments that that change the the outcome of the World Series in the history of the game. And, uh, you know, I, I, maybe people could wonder what the number one uh, event is. You know, a lot of people uh, know about that Bill Mazeroski home run to, to end the World Series, but it's, it's actually a play from that game that sits number one. And we brought it up right here, Hal Smith's, uh, uh, was it a three-run home run, was it? Um, yep, a three-run home run in the bottom of the eighth when they were down seven to six. It, it really turned the, and, and this is a huge lead over the, the number two, like an additional 13% over Trish Speaker's uh, bottom of the 10th hit here. Just uh, incredible moments here. Tony Womack's hit, I'm sure we all remember as well. Francisco Cabrera, that, that, that LCS uh, uh, game winner. Just, it's really cool to just look at like the numbers behind these great moments in the game. Yeah, um, I know a lot of the time uh, people ask, um, people used to ask me when I when I did social media for us, you know, where's postseason war? And the postseason, it doesn't really make sense for the war construct because um, there's fewer teams and, you know, there's um, a, a smaller sample size and stuff like that. But I always directed them to win probability added and now championship win probability added as kind of like a, it, it doesn't, it obviously doesn't do the same thing. It does the complete opposite thing, uh, which is show you 
how the contextual moments affected, you know, how a player's performance in the context of the moment affected what happened. But when you're talking about like postseason performance, that's really what you care about. You know, who is who is clutch is the kind of thing that like war does not want to measure and WPA is all about measuring. Uh, and championship WPA is really like about the most clutch moments uh, uh, that there possibly can be. Um, so I think it's a really cool stat. We all love it. That's why we created uh, the Pivotal Plane Finder, which is basically just a, a stat head tool for you to play with championship win probability on it. And uh, you can see, obviously, this is the list of like the biggest moments of all time, but you can use filters to filter out, um, like, obviously, these are mainly World Series games. So you could filter out just regular season and be like, hey, I wonder what was the most important uh, play in uh, in a regular season game like what was the biggest championship win probability swing there and obviously Bobby Thompson uh, uh, probably not a big surprise there but <laughs> um, but some of the some of these other ones uh, uh, may 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 jog some memories may may make some interesting interesting trivia answers um, and stuff like that so I think that's a really fun tool uh, obviously. Uh, this is a postseason webinar. I don't know why I took you down that regular season path just then, but uh, I thought that was cool. Um, Adam, are there any uh, any any stat head queries, any postseason stuff that you especially like, or anything you found that was fun when you were uh, messing around with it earlier? You know, the, the thing that I love to do with stat head too is you hear about a performance in a game, and you immediately think, how often does that happen? And you don't just have to wonder anymore. You can just jump right into the game finder and, and punch in the parameters. That That's something that I, I love to do. But um, I also like to, uh, you know, anytime I'm testing, I always like to do these uh, not my fault uh, searches where I'm like looking for the, the players on like a losing team who had the most total bases or a pitcher with the highest game score and a postseason loss, things like that. Those are always really interesting to, to look at. Uh, one other interesting search uh, was that uh, I used the new postseason tools in the season finder before this and found that there were three players who have played in the postseason for six different teams. So I don't know if people know who those players are, but that's that's a search you can run in StatHead as well, because we have uh, the ability to sort by the number of franchises a player played for in whatever uh, span of seasons you're looking for. Yeah, and there's there's all kinds of stuff, uh, especially when you dig into this the search types uh, that you might not realize you could do. Um, like we got a question about how to search for, <coughs> excuse me, how to search for combined totals in a game, like combined strikeouts and combined uh, home runs and stuff like that. And you can actually do that in the um, team game finders. Uh, there's uh, uh, a couple of options in there that bring up like. Um, find games with the the most teams matching criteria um and uh when you when you run those searches it'll give you in addition to the 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 number of teams in the game that do it, it'll give you their combined stat line for that game so it can be kind of onerous if you're looking for something like most strikeouts or most home runs but i've done searches like that back in the back in the past when i was watching a game and uh, those are always pretty cool um so that's just something to keep in mind uh while you're um, kind of in your in your in your sad stuff, um, I don't know, Jeremy or or, or Adam, uh, uh, are there any tools that like you think people don't know about that like you really wish they did, or any searches that you you think people don't know that they could run that you wish you they knew they could? Um, I I think one of the things is um, I think people may not know that. Um, stuff like the streak finder and the span finder also don't just work for for regular season games, but also for the postseason. So if you wanted to find the player with the longest hitting streak in postseason games, which I don't off the top of my head know who that is. Obviously, if you, if you wanted to, to look for that right now, you, you could. I think that's a good trivia question kind of thing. I know obviously, obviously DiMaggio is 56 is the number everyone knows when it comes to hitting streaks, but I feel like no one ever would talk about because it would it would span probably several seasons or, or if it was back in the day, maybe a few different World Series series or something like that. But um, you can use the Span Finder or the Streak, well, the Streak Finder in this case, but also the Span Finder to find the most home runs in an X game span to kind of neutralize. Because if you're just looking, for example, at who has the most home runs in a given postseason, obviously Randy Rosarita has 10 is the most, but they also played 20 games that year. There were, it back in the day, a, a team would need to be in three World Series to play in 20 games or even more than that. 
So it's hard to it's hard to neutralize for the fact that a Rosarita had so many more games and those games came in, in the, same, the same season. Whereas the span finder, you could find, okay, who also had hit 10 home runs in a 20 game span in the postseason, even if it came across multiple years. I'm not sure if anyone has done that, but um, a Rosarita's 10 is a little bit less impressive when you take that into account. Off the top of your head, if you had to guess who had the longest hitting streak in postseason history, who would you who would your guess be? I have honestly next to no. I mean, Jeter seems like the obvious guess just because he's Derek Jeter. Yep. Yeah. He's, he's tried. Most, yeah, I think he played 162 games right in the postseason. That's like a full season's worth. So it just seems like the guy that would have the most games would also have the longest hitting streak. So that that's funny, but I didn't know. I don't know who the other guy. I don't know. That was just off the top of my head. He's tied with uh, Manny Ramirez and Hank Bauer with 17. Michael Brantley had a 16-game streak that ended the last postseason. So, um, oh, that's tough. And he's out for the year too, so he can't he can't come back yeah. with the Astros and and continue it or start a new one. Yeah, I think one that I would throw out there that people might not know about is it actually just goes back to the season finder. And I was looking up the most innings pitched in a single postseason, and Madison Bumgarner in that 2014 postseason was was at the top with 52 and two thirds. But right behind him was uh, Bill Foster of the Chicago American Giants. So that's a good reminder that the Negro League stats are also in there for on the season level uh, within StatHead for the uh, postseason. And Foster that year he had 51 innings in a single postseason, and was three and two with a 1.76 ERA. Yeah, that's a that's a really good find. And uh, I feel like it's going to be interesting to see, even with the sort of extended um, postseason, um, the, the, the additional games, I wonder if anyone's ever going to touch either of those numbers, given the way, you know, aggressive uh, 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 bullpen usage and kind of the, the way things are trending. It would be not surprising to me if we never see another 50 inning uh, postseason again, um, but maybe not. Uh, who knows? Another funny one I just found, I, I, I narrowed down the, the hitting trick filter to only active players. And then the first person that came up is Alcides Escobar, who I think is active, even though he's not on that team anymore. But he had a 15-game hitting streak all in 2015 for the Royals in their, in their magical year. But oh, it's wow. funny. I don't think he's ever going to play another, another game. But he's also, I mean, maybe he'll play next year. I, I, don't, I actually don't know. Um, but even if he was still on the Nationals, they obviously have no chance of making the playoffs. But then you have a Rosa Reina actually is um, – is second. Um, he has a nine-game hitting streak. Um, Luis Robert at seven. Um, they're not going to make the playoffs. Freddie Freeman can continue his six-game hitting streak. Aaron Hicks, a six-game hitting streak. Uh, and Marcus Semien is not going to make the playoffs. But it's interesting that there are only a few active hitting streaks for of even more than five games for, for guys that are going to actually be in the playoffs this year. So it doesn't look like that. Um, what was the record? 17 is going to be. Well, I guess they could be broken. I guess there's enough games now. Um, Escobar would be the... Escobar is actually pretty close, but Hopefully, maybe a team will pick him up to be like their Terrence score and, and break the hitting streak record. He could he get to first base and hold up the base and, and celebrate it. Uh, I can see I can see Freddie if the Dodgers make a run. Uh, uh, that's that's possible. Yeah, there's enough games. I guess anyone um, can do that. It can can you play 17 games now? I think you, you easily can, right? You just, it's three games max, and then five, seven, seven. So yeah, yeah. 22 games right there, max. So you someone could easily break the hitting streak record. Even if they've never even played a postseason game before, it would be pretty cool. Um, I also want to point out that Tim Raines had a 14 game uh, postseason hitting streak that stretched from 1981 to 1996. <laughs> you think he, do you think he knew about it? Is the question. <laughs> yeah, that's over a that year, question. That's like a whole, like, that's like a, probably like almost like a high school age hitting streak. Like, that's like, you, start, <laughs> you have a kid in when he has his first hit in, he kids in high school by the time his, his, his hitting streak ends or, he doesn't get to do it. How many stolen bases did he have in, in that stretch? He had uh he only had one stolen base in that whole stretch. Really? He was yeah, selling that... out for a contact. <laughs> <laughs> that's, um, that's wow, that's crazy. Although most of it happened in the it it was one game in 81, and then the rest was 93 and 96. So oh, okay. Um, a little late career Ricky, more than more than prime Ricky. A fun one, re very much related to the first thing that you showed, Jonah. I I'm so glad that you showed that right away, that new feature in the game finder that allows you to find the totals of all selected games. So that way you can look for like uh, which pitcher has started the most game sevens and, and things like that, which is 
super interesting because I didn't know it was Roger Clemens who had started four uh, game sevens, uh, only won one of them. Uh, yeah, I, even if, if you're an experienced stat head user, um, I really want to want to mention because a lot of that stuff, we had these hacks that you uh, would do in the past to find that sort of information. So I know I would be doing the fine matching game searches and looking at the resorting by the combined stat line and all that stuff. And now it's so much easier. Like we we just have the search type. You just click the button, and uh, it really takes a matter of seconds. So even if you're even if you're a stat head veteran, there's going to be like new stuff for you to play with this postseason uh, because of the amazing work that the engineering team and and, and Adam and, and everybody has done in um, um, kind of kind of upgrading and bringing these new uh, additions to uh, to baseball stat head. So it's a very exciting time for sure. Yeah, to pull back on the curtain to explain what we're doing there, all these new features that were coming that have come to baseball, it's because they were available on other sports. And right now what we're doing is we're standardizing the stat head tools across sports. So that's why we're getting these, you know, postseason searches, the fine total of games, a lot of different cool things like that is because we're standardizing all of the, the sports and those other sports like uh, basketball, football, and hockey, who we also have stat head for, uh, had these features. So there's going to be more things coming like that that we have uh, available in other sports as well. Um, so uh, we just have about 15 minutes left. So I want to um, open it up to the to the chat and uh, to see if you have any questions for the panelists, um, anything that uh, uh, you'd like to know about Stathead. Uh, I know Katie has been uh, diligently, you know, answering stuff in, in the chat. Um, and uh, I, uh, I see Jessica in there too. She's a she's a stat head expert. Um, so you you probably have had all your questions answered by now. But just in case there's anything you uh, want to hear uh, hear from our panelists, um, yeah, that's a good question. What was the biggest takeaway from your internship with the Astros, Jeremy? That that is a good question. Um, I think the that biggest takeaway. I kind of had an idea coming in, um, but it's just crazy the amount of information all of these teams have access to. Obviously. Stat head is really cool and all, but there's so much more that the, these teams' internal databases have access to. Like, not not only do they just have all of this the stat cast data that you could find on Baseball Savant, but they also have all of this player tracking movement, um, like the ball tracking using the new Hawkeye system. So it's really cool. They have basically um, instead of just looking at like on Savant where you can search to find the fastest pitch, you can also they have access to where every single player is standing 10 times per second across every game. It's like a ridiculous amount of data that they have. So obviously stat head is really cool because I think baseball reference has a really cool historical database, but it's just a different type of data that these teams have. And they're kind of just tasked, they're kind of throwing all this data and whoever makes the most sense out of it's going to have the best advantage on the field. And I think you can see that with the, the teams that are most successful this year, but I think the sheer amount of data that these teams have, not just the Astros, but also I'm assuming every other team gets it from MLB, but it, it's really overwhelming at times um yeah it seems like uh it, it seems like all the data they have is is really cool and uh it, it's really fascinating to me um especially when it gets into like the decision making process and like how they how they coach up their players and, and all that stuff um we had a question in the q a um about uh it was it was a question about like uh filtering by rookies so i just wanted to show pretty quickly how, how to do that. Um, uh, so you can look up rookie postseason stats in the season finder. Um, I'll go to pitching this time because we've been doing hitting this whole time as examples. So I would switch to postseason. And then when you scroll down through these filters, you see uh, there's three types down here. There's statistical filters, which are obviously stats like war and uh, uh, strikeouts and ERA and all of that stuff. And then there's uh, biographical filters. And this is like the player's age, uh, you can see their height and weight, where they were born, uh, kind of the year of the player's career. But then under status, there's also these kind of interesting um, uh, uh, things that, uh, you know, are accolades or, or statuses of the player. And one of them is rookie status. So if you click that and um, we'll see by default, we have the, the major league rookie status and then strikeouts and I have postseason. So what we're going to see here is the most strikeouts by a rookie in a postseason, um, and it was Michael Walker in 2013 with 33 strikeouts, Walker Bueller uh, right behind him there with 29, and you can even see uh, where they placed in Rookie of the Year voting, which is very cool um, and interesting as well. Um, and Adam, I know uh, the, 
the all-star filter works works totally differently now it's uh with the updates it can do a lot more right right the all-star filter used to just check if the player was ever an all-star in their career and time after time we were asked to uh update the all-star filter so that it would search for players who were an all-star within the specific season that you're querying or the specific range of seasons that you're querying. Plus, we now have the ability to search for the number of times that person was selected to an all-star within that uh, span as well. Yeah, so I just did most uh, most all-star uh, appearances in here. So um, that's the kind of thing that you can do now that I think is uh, a very cool addition to uh, StatHead. Um, let's see. Um, that seems like all the questions. We got a couple in the chat that we got to. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, is there anything that uh, we didn't get to that either of y'all wanted to wanted to show off or talk about? Um, yeah, one one last thing. Um, I think that could be useful if you're looking at the postseason. Um, it's not necessarily like the most advertised future that Stathead has, but you can look and see every single batter and look at all of the pitchers that they face in their career. So if you have a, for example, a World Series game where there are, um, I don't know, let's say it's the Dodgers versus the Yankees. Um, I don't know who's pitching for the Dodgers. Let's just say it's Julio Urias. You can look to find all of the Yankees batters that have faced Urias in, in their careers and see how they fared against him. In my opinion, it's probably not the most predictive thing. I know a lot of people I um, think it's it's really useful when managers take it into account very often, but it definitely is really great for building narratives, if nothing else, for saying, oh, the Yankees are, they can't hit or he is. Like they, none of them have, they all have a 30% strikeout rate or something like that against him. But it's really cool going into a game to see if any of your, any of the players on your team have any experience, in, whether that be in the regular season or in the postseason against the pitchers that they're going to be facing in the upcoming series. Yeah, that's a, that's a really useful tool. Um, I know um, a lot of people who, uh, you know, do do DFS or kind of, or uh, stuff like that, they're always looking at the sort of hitter versus pitcher thing to find uh, find an edge. Uh, and in the postseason, you know, that's really, you know, one, one at bat, as we saw with the championship WPA conversation can, can make a huge difference. Uh, yeah, Adam, any any last thoughts or anything we didn't get to? Or Yeah, I'll just share one page that I've started working on that's going to be part of a bigger uh, bigger feature for StatHead that is just a, a list of sample searches. And I've only done it for baseball so far and only done it for the, the season finders, but I'm going to share it in the chat. And it's literally just a long list of the different types of searches you can run with StatHead. Uh, specifically so far the season finder so uh if anyone wants to take a peek at those and it can act as you know a nice little trivia quiz uh as well if you want to see if you can guess some of those answers so i'll take any feedback on that page too because we're we're trying to build out uh you know what we hear from a lot of people is is uh they don't know where to start there, there's so much that can happen they're a little overwhelmed so one of the things to do is just to give them like a, a menu of things that they can click on and start uh you know, messing with, and, you know, that'll bring you to the, the search that, that created that result. And then you can tweak the filters however you want and explore that way too. Yeah. And I always like seeing what other people are doing in Sadhead. It always gives me ideas and inspiration, you know, certainly both of you, like I, I when I was doing social media, I stole so, so many ideas from what you were posting and the kind of searches you were doing. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's just, uh, uh, especially it's just so deep. There's so much stuff you can do um that it's always great to see kind of like these these suggestions is like a jumping off point uh for for stuff in the future um adam you got a question uh about whether that sample searches page is something they could bookmark and, and use in the future yeah certainly uh that that link that i just sent above has a whole bunch of searches uh eventually we'll add other sports as well so that will probably just be the landing page of the different types of uh sample search pages you can find but yeah i pasted the link above right in the chat so you can check it out there um, and you can also you know if anybody who's using stathead has questions or anything they can dm me on twitter at any time i'm always happy to answer questions about uh stathead and you know even if it's things that we don't have yet that you want to let me know what we should work on next uh i'm always curious to hear that as well yeah and uh we also uh we we love we love hearing from our users and um we're always always around to help if you have any questions or if you uh, run into a search 
that isn't working and you want to know uh, whether you did something wrong or, or maybe there's something wrong with the, with the, with the search engine or whatever it is. Um, if you just have questions, you know, if you just want to chat, you know, feel free to, to reach out. Um, we have an email, uh, support at stathead.com. Um, Katie uh, is the person who monitors that. So you'll, you, you'll be in great hands. She'll be able to answer any of your questions, walk you through any issues you're having. Uh, we're also on social media. Um, so you can hit us up uh, at Stathead on Twitter, uh, at Baseball underscore Ref on Twitter. We are on Instagram, Baseball Reference. Um, we're on TikTok. Uh, TikTok is Baseball Reference, I think, too. Uh, so we are on pretty much any social media you want. So feel free to DM us uh, questions or, or just leave something in, in the replies or the comments. Um, we're, we're, we're always happy to help. Um, Let's uh, uh, what? Let's go around and uh, Adam. Uh, any anything you, you want to you know plug? You know, tell people to follow you on Twitter. Uh, any, anything like that? Well, I realized uh, earlier today that it's uh, it's customer success week. So I just want to say thank you to Katie, who's uh, on customer success for for Stathead, and uh, she is awesome. And if you reach out to us about Stathead, you will. You'll be uh, hearing from Katie, and uh, she is a a gift to uh, Sports Reference, and will help you out. Um, yeah, Jeremy, anything uh, anything you you want to plug or uh, any any last thoughts? Well, first, happy customer service week to Katie. Um, it's, it's a big week for for her, so wish her. And if you have you have, if you have anything to write into Sports Reference about this week, make sure you uh, wish her a happy week. Um, but yeah, also. Uh, follow me on Twitter at LB Random Stats. If you want to see some more example stat head searches, just ask me how I found something, and I'm happy to to link a search so you can do it yourself as well. But yeah, this is a great time. I'm happy to talk baseball with you guys. Katie, it's customer service week. Do you want to do you want to tell everyone to follow you on Twitter? <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm at KT Sharp. Uh, that lowercase, just the letters K T and then Sharp on Twitter. And um, yeah, I'm a big fan, big fan obviously of stat head, big fan of baseball, but I also love all the other sports. So I tend to tweet out a lot of stats. So if you want stats, go to my account. If you want hot takes, not really into that. <laughs> so uh don't go there. But uh thanks guys. Thanks for all the uh the nice words and the, the recognition of customer service week. You learn something new every day, right? Yeah, absolutely. And if you're a football fan. There might be something cool getting launched tomorrow. Yes. That's that head. American uh, football or soccer football? American football. We'll we'll work on the other one. Don't worry. If if you are an NFL fan, uh definitely head over to Stathead tomorrow. You'll be very interested in what you find on there. Um also uh I I think that'll do it, but I have a uh uh I just want to say thanks to our panelists, thanks to Adam and Jeremy for joining us tonight. Uh, thanks to Katie for uh, for keeping things going in the chat and uh, happy customer service week to her. Ha happy customer service week to Aiden, who who does that for the reference site. So mm -hmm. if you email about a bug on baseball reference, that's who you're talking to. Um, and most of all, thanks to all of you for coming in and taking uh, an hour of your night to come and uh, watch this webinar. Uh, I hope it was informative and that you learned something and that you're really excited uh, for October, because I am, uh, this is uh, the my favorite month of the year, uh, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun, and Stathead's going to be a part of that. So thanks so much uh, for coming out tonight, and uh, have uh, a good evening, and we will see you next time.